This week we're talking about Hotwire Spark, which is a new live reloading tool for Hotwire applications. Uh, Jorge Manrubi has been working on this, and basically the philosophy here is to do the minimal set of changes to update the page. Um, so kind of like the hot module reloading that you would expect, uh, instead of a full page reload, this is going to monitor HTML for changes and then do a morph of the page. So if maybe you have a tabs component and you're selected the second tab, then this will just update the HTML as needed, whatever has changed, instead of refreshing the entire page and pushing you back to the top and having the first tab selected, it is going to uh, do those minimal set of changes. Same with CSS, if you have multiple style sheets, it's only gonna refresh the one that changed. And same with your stimulus controllers, although import maps are the only ones supported at the moment. Um, but CSS bundling and Tailwind CSS Rails are supported, um, so you can use that as well with those. And the configuration's super easy. You just tell it, hey, here's where my HTML lives, here's where my CSS lives, and here's where my stimulus controllers live. It'll monitor for those changes, broadcast it over Action Cable, and then uh, make those updates on the browser. So here I've got the uh, Rails Getting Started Guide products page set up here, and we're gonna bundle add to the development group Hotwire Spark. And that's really all we have to do. We just add the gem, and we can run our Rails server, and we will have our application here. If we go into, say, our CSS, and we remove that font um, of Arial on there, you'll see that that changed right away and went to the default browser font. If I undo, hit save, there we go. It updated automatically. So the same thing applies for our HTML. If we go to say products, index, we can say products bang, I'll hit save, and you'll see it refresh on the page there. And if we go to our browser inspector here, let's uh, watch this right here, and I'm gonna undo this change and hit save, and you will notice that this header is the only one that flashes blue. So it's the only thing that's actually changed in the browser's DOM. So there we go, or uh, didn't flash blue, but it did get highlighted there. So you saw that's the only thing that Idiomorph had morphed on the page. It didn't modify products, it didn't modify nav or notice or anything else. That is all that has changed in the HTML. So that's pretty awesome. It's basically using Stimulus's morphing feature behind the scenes to make this work. So that's cool. And the same thing goes for JavaScript. Um, we don't really have any example JavaScript in here, but we can add a controller. So we'll use this hello controller. We'll make a div probably down here at the bottom. We'll say data controller equals hello. And we'll close our div, save that, and you'll see hello world is now there, but if we go to this and we just say hello instead and save that, the stimulus controller has been refreshed on the page, basically disconnected and remounted with the new code here, and uh, that changed our text on the page to hello. We can save this again and go back to hello world. And as you might have noticed in our terminal here, we have some things that are going on. So this is grabbing the new hello controller.js. Um, it is then broadcasting to the Hotwire Spark channel with action cable, this action called reload stimulus, and it gives us the path to that file. Then it transmits that across um, to our browser using action cable. And then the JavaScript inside of Hotwire Spark takes care of refreshing that for us. So that's pretty awesome to see. It's pretty simple and straightforward on how it works. Um, and in the future, we'll see some other options to refresh the entire page. So for example, when you have tricks on the page and uh, it may not work well with a morph, then um, what we'll see is that you will be able to change that and say, let's refresh the whole page instead of uh, just triggering the morph instead. So this will be more flexible, more customizable, at the moment, it's kind of targeted for your import maps only, um, but we have to have a starting place for it, and that's why it's zero, version 0 0.1. And now the community, you guys can get involved, try this out, use it in your applications, suggest improvements and ways we can use this with 
JS bundling and other tools. So this is a good option for us who are not using like Vite that has that built in. I've hacked uh, this feature kind of into ES build myself, which is kind of a pain to use. And so this is a nice, awesome tool we can use out of the box. Um, it's very similar to Hotwire Live Reload, which has done a lot of the similar things, but it's not using morphing, it just reloads the entire page. And so we have you know, another option uh, to use here. So I thought it would also be useful to take a look at the source code for this. It is pretty straightforward. There is basically this little installer thing that wires up the, um, the action cable stuff for us. The Hotwire Spark engine basically tells it, hey, here's all the directories we want to, uh, to push and everything. And then the configuration gets set up and then it installs it into your application like so, um, if Hotwire Spark is enabled. And then it has a simple file watcher that uses those directories in your configuration for watching the HTML, the CSS, and the stimulus controllers. And each one of those processes things a little bit differently. So we have our different watchers for those. Um, the installer is pretty simple, but it adds some middleware to handle this um, action cable prepend um, and so on to make sure that our action cable stuff is set up and then our monitoring begins and all of that good stuff. And uh, then our middlewares are what handle those different things. So this is kind of where it's injecting um, that JavaScript to our head tag. So if we take a look at this, you will see the Hotwire Spark JavaScript is added and we didn't have to add that ourselves. It just magically appeared through this hot, uh, Hotwire Spark middleware that adds itself to our rack middleware stack. And then we have our uh, middleware and server for Action Cable, but a lot of what happens in here is receiving that stuff on the client side. So our JavaScript is where we wanna um, take a look at this, and it's basically going to wire itself up with this monitoring channel. Um, and so that is your Action Cable channel that is going to be listening for these messages that we are broadcasting, then it is going to try to dispatch that. It will then say, oh, we have a reload of HTML, let's run that. We have a CSS reload, let's run that. Let's rerun the uh, reload of stimulus if that was what was the case. And so then it has these different reloaders for each one and we can go through those reloaders and see how they work. So the CSS one is pretty straightforward. It is going to reload all the CSS links that were given to it. So then um, it just goes through and, and finds those and makes those updates as necessary. So it's setting that href attribute to the URL um, and then logging that as well. And I believe you can turn on some browser uh, logger stuff. Let's take a look at that real quick. So in the browser, if we have Hotwire Spark, Spark config logging enabled, um, we can see those activities here. So if we go to our console, say true for that, let's try that. Actually, we wanna keep this open so we can see those as we change, say, hello world there. We get the stimulus controllers reloading and it tells us exactly which one has changed. If we do the same thing here where maybe we remove that stimulus controller, we'll see that it reloaded the HTML uh, as well for that. And we can put that back. We'll save this. And uh, I'm assuming that it catches that the data controller is in that. And that's how it's also broadcasting that stimulus controller change as well. So if we do maybe just this without modifying, or maybe it's just doing that every time, I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, that's how we turn on our logging, which is great. And then the relo reloaders, um, for HTML, for example, are pretty straightforward. They're going to call idiomorph morph um, with a new body. So it gets the HTML broadcast and then reloads the document and that's about it. Uh, looks like it also reloads stimulus as well. That way, probably so that when new HTML is updated, it can go and address all of those uh, stimulus controllers that are on the page. So it probably is kind of a required thing anytime HTML is updated. The stimulus reloader is the one that does a little bit more work in here, but it's going and basically swapping out uh, the stimulus controller. So it's reloading the stimulus 
change stimulus controllers and unloading the deleted stimulus controllers, like the, the old instance of them, it's able to go through and then remap those to the new JavaScript that is on the page. And that's about it. There's not a whole lot to this. Now, because it's going and doing these surgical updates to the page with morphs and with replacing those stimulus controllers, it isn't going to be a perfect solution for every application yet, but we'll be able to update the entire page, which will be a more compatible thing as needed for applications running third-party JavaScript or whatever that doesn't work well with morphs, then we will have that taken care of in the future. Um, and if you'd like to contribute, there's a whole lot of discussion about different ideas on how we can fix some of those issues. Um, for example, supporting sprockets right now, it works with prop shaft, um, and that will be, you know, added soon. So you'll be able to use this with older applications as well. And, uh, you know, handling all these other little issues and ideas and things that come up and hopefully we will see a version 1.0 out soon with lots of these things tackled. And then this can be maybe the new default for adding live reloading to your Hotwire applications in Rails. Super excited about this. This is something that I find really valuable, especially when I'm doing CSS design work and I'm making changes and I wanna have to see them in the browser, but I don't wanna have to go tab over there, refresh, go back to my editor and do that jump all the time. This saves an enormous amount of time and iterations in your implementations of front end work. So I really like having this. Of course, this is a feature you get for free if you're using Vite, um, cause that's built in, but uh, it's something that, you know, makes life a little bit easier for those of us who are not using that, maybe sticking with import maps or whatever else that Rails defaults. So it's cool to have an option for that as well. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.